Blog Talk Radio. Hello, well, thank you for joining us on Get Inspired with Joyce. I'm your host, Joyce Sajanoku. A few years back, I had the privilege of meeting this wonderful young man and his family. He is super talented, needless I say, is multi-talented. He can sing, play instruments, and so much more. Right from his mother, mother's womb, he will tell you that he's been exposed to music. He's a student. He's doing great things in his church community all over the world. Um, this brother of mine is our guest today on Get Inspired with Joyce. Please help me welcome Emmanuel Adomali, Mr. Manuel, Manuel himself. Are you there? Yes, ma'am, I'm here. How's everybody doing? <laughs> <laughs> we are good. We are good. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thank God for everything. Yeah. That's good. good. That's good. See, your name is a, a little tongue tied there, Manny Wells. Even though I yeah, love saying that, I say Manny I Manny Wells. Manny Wells, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, welcome to the show, and thank you so much for coming. I know you're probably very busy since you know going into the summer and everything. But um, since school is out, we're trying to interview college students that are doing great things, living their dreams in their community, and, of course, impacting the world with their gifts as well. So thanks again for coming on the show, Emmanuel. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. pleasure. You're welcome. So let's get right into it. So who is Manny Wells? Oh, man. Um, Manny Wells is a young, um, is a young artist slash producer that, that just loves to make music. And um, while also loving to make music, he loves life and he loves God and he loves love. So that that's Manny mm. Wells and those three things play a key role in Manny Wells' sound and his music and his style. So God, life and love play three big uh, are three big, you know, things that, that help Manny Wells in, in life and things like that. Um the name Manny Wells came from um, you know, my first name is Emmanuel, obviously, but the wells part just signifies, you know, wells. You know, they have wells in Nigeria, and they just go <laughs> fetch water and things like that. So, mm-hmm. and um, that just signifies my thought process because I like to think deep and I like to think, I like to analyze things before I actually go into it. So even with my songs, I like to, you know, write about things that would, that can connect with at least one person's soul. So that's mm. that's who that's who Manny Wells is. Wow. See I like the way you say it. it's so smooth. And your your kind of music it's um it's very interesting and it draws you in. And I was just wondering like how you deal with, you know, the challenges or you know, the negativity that may be attached to, you know, doing your gen- general your general music. You know, you do rap, you do your lyrics are really powerful. So do you face any challenges in terms of, you know, doing secular music or doing regular gospel, which I, I know you are? So are there any challenges associated with that that you face? Um, I, um yes, yes and no. I say yes because um, people people trying to con- – they, they kind of, like, confuse my my genre – which is no genre because I actually believe I don't have a genre because, like I said before, I'm a lover of music, but right. I also love God and I love life and I love love. So, you know, those three things play a key role in my music, but I just don't – I don't have a genre because I believe my music is for is, – is a bridge. I believe my music is like a bridge for people to cross over to the church, but you can't you can't get on the bridge if you don't trust it. You can't get on the bridge – if you don't mm-hmm. trust the foundation. Now, what is the foundation of that bridge? That's my faith. That's life, and that's love. Now, but a real bridge, you you trust it because it's real. You you see it like okay, I can actually trust it. And now, what is that trust? Me being authentic in my music, me being honest about my struggles in life, me saying certain things that signif- that shows that I'm still human, but at the same time, I'm not using that as an excuse to be mediocre in things that I do. So I wouldn't say that I necessarily have a genre. I just, because I'm just a lover of music, but God, life, and love are three things that, you know, 
are very big in my music. Yeah. And, and um, mm-hmm. I just I just like to keep it real. So like some people will hear me say certain things that a typical quote unquote gospel artist won't say because you need we need more people in the church, but where is the bridge? There's no bridge available at all. Like there, there's a big gap between the church and the outside world. And um, the mm. only people, and, and that's that's heavy in music. The only people that are kind of mm. like tapping into the outside world are people who aren't making music. So like in music, there there's a big there's a big gap. People, and then especially with our generation, we we um we tend to act like the music we listen to. Right. Mm-hmm. So. Um, the way, and then I, I'm making music for the people who are slightly confused and people who are outside of the church. So I have to keep it a hundred. I have to acknowledge that I'm going through certain things that they're going through because honestly, some people in the church we just like to fake about the things that we're going through, or we just act like everything's all perfect when it's not. So mm. that's that's you know that's too many roses, and that's the type of music I make. I don't have a genre. I just I just make music because I love music. But I also love God, and I also love love, and I also love life. So yeah. Wow, that's that's amazing. I like the way you put it, and I, I know I was listening to one of your lyrics that says, "Listen to my words, don't give me any genre." And I think that's really interesting. And I I want to believe that maybe your background, maybe your family, the way you were brought up, um, maybe in a Christian home, contributed to how you shaped your ministry, if you will. And now you're saying mm-hmm. there is love, there's God, and, and, and it's amazing. So how how did you come up with this? Did you just get up one day and say, you know what, I'm not going to have any genre. I'm just going to go and say, you know what, I'm going to focus on love and just basically just tap into my deeper self, which I'm understanding from what you're saying. So how did you come up with that, that you're not going to go this route? You're going to stay in gospel and stay true to yourself? Um, I came up. So when I first released my first, when I released my first project, I was I was younger. I was about sixteen. Well, I, when I start started working on it, I was about like sixteen, seventeen, and uh, I just released it to the world, to the open, and I had no type of understanding of how like the industry works or even how people are receptive of music. So when people listen to mm-hmm. it, they could not find a box for me. They wanted to put me in a box, mm-hmm. but they could not find a box for me. Like. The message was was very was very was heavy with the gospel, but the music and the style was not gospel music because if we want to be technical, gospel music is um like Kirk Franklin, Donnie McCurkin, um, people like that. But when they listen to my music they're like, Oh my goodness, this is not necessarily gospel. The the message is very is in is very in line with with the gospel. But it's not the gospel. And when people would tell me this, I didn't know how to take it because I was like, "Oh man, mm. what do I do next?" So it, with prayer and with time and with maturity, I'm um, getting to know my inner self, which is AKA the Holy Spirit. Getting to know the mm. world, getting to under, getting a better understanding of the world, going through certain struggles in life, and then actually just taking the time out to study some of the people around me and my generation. That's how I gradually. Um, became fun of this whole thing of not having a box, but just creating music that can connect to people. And when when they actually care about the music and they deep, dig deeper, they will see that the foundation is God and mm. it's love. So it's it's almost like wow. it's, it's like a spiritual marketing scheme if you if you want to call it that. So um so yeah so that's how I came up with it. It wasn't something I just thought of in one day, but it was just gradual from people not being able to put me somewhere, but they wanted to, mm. but they were not. They you know, I, and I thank God for for everything for the message and the the mission that He's given me in life. But it was it wasn't something that came like overnight. It was just gradual. Wow, I, I, wow, yeah. you you're so amazing. I mean, I can listen to you all day and just you know, tap from you from what you're saying. And and I like the fact that you're able to reach out to everyone. And the reason why mm-hmm. I feel you're probably not in a box is because you, you cater to everyone. You cater to everyone. And when they listen to you, they're able to, you know, sense that spirituality, which is Christ. And 
um, and and, and um, what, what your music is about, which is great. And I know a few, maybe it was last year, 2014, you opened up for Marley, Marley in um, yeah. um, Howard University. How did that come up? I mean, what what happened? Did he just call you or something? Um, like, what well, happened? Yeah. How did that come about? Well, first of all, yeah. First of all, shout out to Molly Music. He's he's a he's a cool guy. He's very humble. He's a homie. Um, yeah. so Molly, this 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 artist by the name of John Bellion, who is who is not um, he's not he's not a gospel artist. He's so like he's so different from gospel. And I, as an artist, I just I listen to all types of art, like different. I listen to everybody. When I mean everybody, from from the dirtiest songs to the cleanest songs to the church songs, so I listen to everybody. So he Molly tweets him. He's like, oh man. Why is that though? Like before you, before you Why is that? tell me about Mali, I'm sorry to cut you off. Why is that? Why do you listen to all kinds of music? Why do you listen because, to all kinds of music? Do you get inspiration from them or something? Oh yeah, definitely. Because one, okay. I'm a lover of music itself. I'm a lover of sound. I'm a lover of production. I'm a lover of music itself, without any boxes, without any genres. So I just love, I love music. I from Juju. Which is my, which is my basic foundation from Juju music to Fuji, and then when we cross over to the hip hop, to the Afro beats, to the alternative. Mm-hmm. Now I'm starting to listen to, um, electronic, electronic, uh, hip hop, electronic, and which is like the European sound. And now right. you know I'm just because I I want to figure out a way to blend all mm. these sounds all together and create something unique. And I just love, I just really love music. I, I just, I don't believe in um, me just listening to one specific genre. And I say that because I'm at a point where I'm strong enough in my faith to know that I can't be shifted or moved by their message anymore. Mm. Mm. Powerful. Because mm. I understand who I am now. So, so that's why I listen to all types. For a while, I stopped listening to all types of music because I was getting influenced. But as I grew uh, as I matured more, I, I st- and now I started to expand my wings, and I realized these people are human as well, and you know, they know God or they know this these things, but because of the media and the current situation, they have to do certain things to make money, yada yada yada, you know, different things. But that's why I listen to music. Interesting. All interesting. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So, um, wow. So, Molly, so tell me about Molly. Yes, yes. So how did it happen? I'm like all anxious. I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Molly, Molly uh, got on Twitter and he tweeted John Bell and was like, "Yo, um, your your work is really dope because what John Bellion does is like he has songs, but he always has like in studio performances of how he came up with the song, and people really gravitate towards that because people like to see the process of things. And um, I guess Molly right. really gravitated towards that, and he was like, "Let's go on tour," but and mm. and I respected that so much because they have two separate opposite messages. But because Mali is also a lover of music as a whole, he reached out to him. And um, although John Bellion, he he was um he's like an upcoming artist and um, he's he's independent and he's doing his thing by himself. He was on tour. He was on his first headlining tour around the country. He couldn't mm-hmm. make it. So I tweeted. I tweeted. I responded to that tweet because I follow both individuals, Molly and John Bay. I responded, I was like, hey, that's a joke. Um, let's go on tour together. And I wouldn't say it was a joke per se, because prior to that, I was on I was on the social media fast. for like, I, I, I like to take the time out to just zone away or get away from, like, the media and things like that and just focus on the real deal, which is God, which is life, which is real love. Amen. So I was, I was off of social media and I was um when I got back I was just being obedient to my inner spirit, the Holy Spirit and I just heard that thing like, okay, respond to this tweet. I responded to the tweet and I told a few of my friends, like five people, Hey, tell Molly to, you know, take me on tour and um from five it just from like five or ten people that I personally told it just grew to like thirty people to the point where wow. it was like almost like suffocating to him. Like, oh my goodness, who's this guy, Manny Wells? And then he responds, he's like, yo, he's like, yo, why is everybody like choking Manny Wells down my throat? Is he, is he the president? And and um, yeah, he he tweeted me, he followed me on Twitter, and then he asked me for my wow. for my music, and I sent it to him. 
And then a few minutes later, he uh, he messages me and he's like, "What's your booking info?" And um, I gave him my manager's contact, and then it was history from then. A week wow. later, a week or two later, I was opening up for Miley Music. So yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Look at God. That's a that's an amazing testimony. I know. I think that's great. Yes. And I, <laughs> wow. And I and I know the first time I listened to you. I mean, you've been. I've known you for a, a year. And when you sang, I think when you released your, the first time you did your release, and I'm like, wow, you sound like Molly, like Molly music. I'm like, whoa, like you got, do you hear that a lot? Are you guys sound alike? Yes. Yes, I heard that for my first project. I heard that because at that time, I was just discovering, like, different sounds. So I, I was listening to a lot of Molly music, and I didn't really have, I wasn't really in a position where I could really control my tone and my music and my mm. voice and things like that. So I sounded a lot like my music. So after after working on myself for about a year, I released another project, and people were, like, so shocked. It's like, oh, is this, is this the same man? He was like, he really doesn't sound <laughs> like my music. They, and um, no. I always tell people that if you listen closely, we all, we all just have the same singing style. It's not necessarily that we mm. sound alike. And um, I just right. and my accent is very heavy in my singing, so so yeah. Interesting! So wow, wow, wow! We have few few minutes. I, like I said, I can at least listen. I don't think thirty minutes is even enough for us. And I wanted to play <laughs> your music in the beginning. That's why it was kind of quiet when we started. But for some reason, it's not. Be yourself is one of my favorite tracks, and um, I have it wow. here. But for some reason, it's not playing. So hopefully, by the end of the show, I will be able to get it on. But um, I know your parents. I want to ask you, like, what did they think about what you do? I'm sure they're super proud of you. Um, so w- well, what's their feel for what you do? The ministry as a whole. Were, at first, they I wouldn't say they opposed it, but they weren't too comfortable with it because, honestly speaking, a lot of people don't like to branch out. They don't like to do new things. They like to stay in boxes, and they wanted me to do the traditional gospel music. But I, I will not, I will not ignore God to please anybody, mm. even if it's my parents. So I stuck with it, and now they appreciate it, and now they support me full force. And I thank God for Aww. that. So, yeah. well, that's amazing. That's great. That's awesome. And I, I, I wanted to ask you. You know, I know you're a student. How do you merge all of this together with, you know, what you do, school, and all of that? And of course, if you can talk about your major, what you do as well. So, so how do you um, make music? You just, mm-hmm. you, just, you just have to be very time conscious. You have to set aside time to study. You got to set aside time to write songs. Set aside time to um, grow spiritually, um, mentally, mm-hmm. physically, and things like that. So you just have to be very time wow. conscious because we only have twenty four hours in a day. So, and we're in school for eight hours. And we sleep for another eight hours, so that's sixteen hours mm-hmm. leaving uh eight about eight hours left, so like you have to be really time conscious and um I mean, but recently, I took a small break from from school because a lot has just been going on, but um yeah, okay. but you just have to be very time conscious that's that's the best thing and merge all of that together so what's your major in school are you um information are you doing music? Things? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I, I'm okay. A, oh, that's I'm interesting. I, I like uh, I like technology. I want to I want to do something with technology and music later on in life. So I I, mm, I decided mm. to study that. Yeah. Great. I see the connection now. Okay. Great. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So you know what? A lot of young people are out there, and, and I know you have a lot of fans. Even just speaking of the church alone, I'm like, you have a lot of people that love you. Really. <laughs> All the same, um, the big sisters and aunties and everything up there, we're super proud of you. And we are behind you where you're not the one fan. And what Thank will you. you say to those people out there that are still hesitant to go after their dreams? You know, a lot of us are kind of like scared to take that leap of faith. You talked about it a little bit, you know, branching out. So uh-huh. how will you, you know, yeah, advise someone who is like hesitant to follow their dreams or passion? Um. Just just be real with yourself. Um, honesty is one of the, the most powerful things in life. Be real and dig deep and try to understand whether you're supposed to be doing 
this or doing that. And when you when you figure that out, you gotta you gotta figure out a way to connect yourself with with Bible stories because Bible stories help. Um, and God told Abraham, "Leave your father's house." Um, back mm-hmm. then, leaving your father's house was abnormal. It wasn't the normal thing. So you have to figure out ways to connect these stories, understand your time, and understand our time. So if you try to connect those two, just I don't want to preach too much, but back then, leaving your father's house was was like, yo, you, you are very crazy. Why are you leaving when you have everything mm-hmm. here? Everything is so family orientated. Now, if you connect it to the modern times, that's like chasing your dreams rather than getting a typical job or that's right. like obeying God rather than mm. listening to other people. So we have to figure out a way to connect those things because those things will actually empower you and push you forward. And when you do push forward, you just have to put God first. You got to um, pay respect to God. You got to try to stay humble no matter how many people are telling you you're doing good, you're doing that, understand that you can do more in life. You can do more for God. Nothing is ever enough. Don't get complacent. Don't be, don't accept mediocrity. And, mm-hmm. and I think, I think if we all do that as a whole, we'll be fine. Even in our spiritual lives, we'll be, we'll be fine. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. You say you don't want to preach. I think you just did. So I think you just preached right there. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you I want to talk about what you're working on And how we can get in touch with you on social media Your booking information All of that stuff um, So what are you working on right now? Any- I'm always working on music So music Because I, I just love music I try to work or Maybe write a song Work on production every day Every minute Maybe at work I'm thinking about a song So I'm always working on music but I, a project to say, I'm not really working on a project. I'm just working on a collection. And um, mm. I've been I've been talking to I've been meeting new people and people who have influence in the in the game, quote unquote, which is the industry. And um, we're just trying to figure different things out on how we're going to market. You know, the material that's out. We're working on visuals, music videos, and um. To reach me on social media, it's, everything is at Manny Wells. That's from Twitter to Instagram to Facebook. So um, what else is out there? Snapchat. Um, everything. If, whatever, just Google Manny Wells, M-A-N-N-Y-W-E-L-L-Z, and you'll find me. My booking info is um, inquiries at the eFairLife.com, I-N-Q-U-I-R-I-E-S at the eFairLife.com. T-H-E-I-F-E, E-F-E, as in love, life, dot com. And um, that's that's the whole movement. That's the whole, that's the crew. That's the mini label or whatever people like to call movements and ministries these, these days. So that's that's the, that's my team, um, the e life. So that's awesome, how you put awesome, me you awesome. Find things. Yeah. Awesome. And what I'm going to do at the end of the show, too, I have a, a like a, we have a YouTube version of the show, so I'm going to put all your information on there as well so everyone can um, right. get in touch with you. Emmanuel, it's been really, really fantastic chatting with you. I know it was long coming. I've been saying it, and then we, we eventually, you know, are able to work things out. So I really appreciate <laughs> you for coming on the show. <laughs> I hope you will come no back. Thank you. Right? Yes, definitely. Definitely. Great, great, definitely. great. Thank you so much. Guys, that's all the time we have today. We hope one way or another you were indeed inspired to, you know, live on purpose and work towards making this world a better place with your gifts and your talents. And for all the college students out there, and students in general, it's really, it really doesn't matter what people think of you. It, what only matters is what God thinks of you and what you think of yourself. I mean, we're, we heard uh, mm-hmm. Mr. Manuel himself. He says, stay true to yourself. Just be yourself. And allow yourself to open up, and I believe God will direct your path and show you where to go. And I, I, on, I understand something. If you open up, God will send ladders your way. He will send people your way. And Amen. I hope, indeed, the show was a blessing unto you today. You can catch us or catch our previous shows on YouTube, slash J, Ajanaku, Facebook, Get Inspired with Joyce, Twitter, Get Inspired with Joyce, Instagram, Get Inspired with Joyce. Again, I want to say thank you for joining us. Today on Get Inspired with Joyce, I'm your host, Joyce Sajanaku. I want to say thank you again for my to my guest, 
Manuel, you are the best. Thank you so much for coming hey, on the show. Thank God. Thank you for having me. God bless. You're welcome. All right. Have a good day. Right. Bye bye. You too. The show is brought to you by supporters, well wishers, friends, and family. God Remnant Assembly invites you to divine visitation from 21st of June through 28th of June. But coming up on the 23rd of June, Pastor Enoch Adeboye will be ministering at 5 p.m. at Samuel Riggs Alumni Center, University of Maryland, College Park. The host pastor is Tayo and Sarah Brown. Please call 301-477-1723 for more information. And I'll be myself No more lies In truth I will tell Yeah, 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 yeah. You keep it real And I'll be myself Girl, it's the things that I'm dope Crack is my message, that's hope Hope to overdose Hope to overdose on hope Faith to look over those that want me on the downward slope But pray for the ones that I hurt Did I never hurt the ones that I pray for again Wrong for causing you all that pain I respect it if you wanna switch off that lane That we both made Or what the good Lord made Got dirty, now it's time to clean We all made Time to play on the realness of you The realness of you is how you define the truth But the truth is we ruthless Ignorant and we clueless Mystifying what the good is Yeah, we claim that we are the good is Being real estate, you being real is 